Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Monday, January 22, 2018. In the news tonight, investigation into the deaths of two Pomeroon farmers takes a twist. Mother of eight disappears for the second time, leaves her husband frustrated. Feasibility study being conducted to determine how Guyana will establish its law school. And in court, 50-year-old woman slapped with four years in jail for cocaine trafficking. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Beginning tonight's newscast, we tell you that the investigation into the deaths of two Pomeroon farmers has taken a twist. The police are now receiving reports that one may have shot the other before turning the gun on himself. Find out more in this Nikhil John report. Crime Chief Paul Williams says the three suspects who have been implicated in the murder of two Pomeroon farmers have been released on bail. Williams says investigators are awaiting the forensic results from the samples taken from both corpses. The crime chief added that statements were taken from the three suspects. He further added that investigators were told that one of the farmers shot the other while he turned the gun on himself. However, investigators are awaiting the forensic results. Dead are 28-year-old Ambrose Baharali of Grand Stelling Hope and 23-year-old Martin Godet of Friendship Canal Lower Pomeroon River. Initial investigation has revealed that the men each had a gunshot wound to the head. Meantime, Command of G Division Kali Parsram said two handguns and a quantity of ammunition of different calibers were seized during a police operation. He attributed the capture of the suspects and seizure of the illegal items to a robust police operation conducted following the shooting. The police in a statement earlier said the victims were seen conversing with the suspects just after 15 hours. However, shortly after, two loud explosions were heard and the suspects were seen fleeing the scene by boat. The police say the suspects were armed with handguns. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A taxi driver is now panicking after his reputed wife disappeared 20 days ago, leaving him to care for his eight minor children alone. The man is pleading with his wife to return. Kipney Jordan filed with this report. A taxi driver is left baffled after his common-law wife, Cordelia Darrell, vanished on January 2. Shelton Davis, who is now tasked with providing and caring for his eight children he shares with Darrell, is pleading with the public to assist him in locating the woman. This is now the second time in three months that Davis' reputed wife has disappeared. Davis stated that he had no dispute with his reputed wife. He also noted that the first time he filed the missing persons report, she had returned home safe in October last. He again reported the matter during the course of last week to the police, but his efforts to find Daryl has proven futile. Well, all I am asking for the public, if the public could assist me, you know, if they saw her, talk to her, let she get home. You know, even if she upset, you know, I could be able to talk to her. If she have a problem, let me find out and know what's going on. So we could get it sorted out. Because we don't have any problem that caused her to leave. You understand? There's no problem that caused her to leave. He went on to state that he has contacted Daryl's family members, but no one was able to provide any information of her whereabouts. Davis is unable to say what his wife was wearing at the time she disappeared, but says he needs his wife at home and the children need their mother. Really, really affecting the family because every night the children cry. And when they cry, I eventually cry already. I cry also. So, you know, we really wanted her. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. A gold miner who early this morning was robbed of two cellular phones and a sum of cash managed to subdue one of the four male suspects and promptly delivered him into the hands of the police. The suspect, a 16-year-old student who resides in Kitty, was found in possession of one of the victim's phones. Investigation revealed that about midnight, the victim of Canal No. 1 Polder was standing on the Kitty public road awaiting a taxi when the suspects, one armed with a firearm, pounced and relieved him of his valuables. As the suspects were fleeing the scene, the victim apprehended the youth who had an injured foot. 
In Guyana's quest to ease the burden of prospecting lawyers, a feasibility study has commenced to determine how the country will establish the law school. This has been confirmed by the Attorney General Bastille Williams. Nicole John will follow this report. Attorney General Basil Williams, during an interview, said the government is continuing from where the People's Progressive Party left off. He noted that the past administration was granted permission to establish a law school in Guyana. Minister Williams said his predecessor, Anil Nanlal, had acknowledged that Guyana was given the permission and so the government is merely acting on the authorization. The Attorney General is claiming that the Council of Legal Education does not have an archive. And the CLE doesn't have the records, they don't have an archive. And the decision was taken quite clearly. The Chancellor was there, the Bar Association President of Ghana, they were all there. And the conclusion is, looking at the material that they had, permission must have been granted. Why would the Chancellor of the Judiciary at the time, Justice Bernard, go to a meeting and talk about citing at the University of Ghana, the school. So there are other documentation. Minister Williams said the government is currently conducting a feasibility study to determine how the country will establish the law school under the Council of Legal Education. The cost of that feasibility study was not revealed to the media, as the minister said he could not say what that cost would be. Nobody can't stop us from building a law school. It's just that we are community-minded. We, we founded, we are founding members of CARICOM, and we feel that we have a right. You have schools in Bahamas, you have schools in Trinidad, you have schools in Jamaica. So we want to build a law school here. It's too, it's too tough for our students. It's going, it's ongoing. Oh, right now, the University of Ghana is identified 15 acres of the 150 acres that they have. They have shown our valuation person an area contiguous to the forensic lab. But that, that wouldn't be adequate enough, for, obviously, for law school. So it's right now with them, but we're hoping that, that they see the light and we complete it quickly. A committee has been established here in Guyana, according to the Attorney General. He said those members include Chancellor of the Judiciary, Chief Justice, Retired Justices Claudette Singh, Duke Pollard and Rudolph James, Professor Harold Lutchman, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Guyana, and the Registrar. We have to submit nothing to no CLE until we're ready. Mr. Amor is not in charge of the CLE. Mr. Amor is a servant of the Council, including the Council of Ministers, who, but who told him that he couldn't publish no statement that he did, and he had to be dry. So you almost understand the interstices of these organizations. And we are saying no international organization is driven by the opposition. And we have an email sent from him to Nandalal assuring him that he will put the item on the agenda without consulting me, the sitting attorney general for Ghana. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 
The secret is out. Tyo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me get so much in this store, guys. Me confused and a price low to Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. And like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> As the Ministry of Social Protection continues to improve the transparency, accountability, and service delivery of the Senior Citizens' Pension System, we're kindly advising all beneficiaries of the Senior Citizens' Pension to contact their nearest GCOM office and make an application to update their information to the nine-digit National Identification Card. As of March 1, 2018, the Ministry of Social Protection will not be facilitating the processing of senior citizens' pension vouchers without the presentation of the nine-digit identification card. We thank you for your cooperation. This is a message from the Ministry of Social Protection. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Bushy Park Beach Barica presents at Chutney Soka Beach Party on Sunday 28th of January 2018 at Bushy Park Beach featuring Bunty Singh. Myself and my little son, Krish, we come in here to mash up the place. The Caddy Singh. We come, come in to turn up the party until the turnover. Steve Rampa. Guess what your truly is going to be there. Anita Willie. Come on, we have a good time. And Sexy Sandel. All backed by Notorious Sound while stock bar in attendance. Chutney Soka Beach Party on Sunday the 28th of January 2018 at Bushy Park. Beach, sponsored by Beach View Hotel and LS Haridat Sawmills. Here's the news update. Welcome back. The suspect, who was arrested for the alleged murder of Tevin Paris, has been released on bail. There has been no other arrest for the murder of Paris. Find out more in this report. The police are still investigating the circumstances which led to the demise of Tevin Paris. Paris was found dead by his uncle at his lot 66 Garnet Street residence. Investigators found an illegal 9mm pistol with one spent shell next to the deceased. Following the post-mortem, it was revealed that the gunshot wound was not self-inflicted, leading the police to believe that he was murdered. Acting Crime Chief Paul Williams says the investigation is ongoing. He added that a suspect, who was taken into custody, has been released on bail. Uncle of the deceased had told media operatives that around 8 hours 20, he made the discovery of his nephew's lifeless body on a bed. The deceased was the manager of Corner Cake Bar, located at the corners of Lime and Ben Streets, Work and Rust. He was also part of the promotion team that held the flashback party. The police have not arrested anyone else for the murder of Paris. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The blame for the dire state of the sugar industry has been thrown from hand to hand. This time round, Alliance for Change is blaming the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union for sabotaging the sugar industry and undermining the Ghana Sugar Corporation. But who exactly is to be blamed for the state of the sugar sector? Sandra Ramatar with the details. The Alliance for Change is accusing the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union for harming the sugar industry. They are accusing the union of working decades to undermine the Guyana Sugar Corporation as to prohibit its efficiency. This information was briefed in the AFC column dated January 21, 2018. Pointing to the loud noises emanating from the union about the rights of sugar workers, the AFC reminded them of their alleged genuine pretense in the late 80s under the PNC. 
This, AFC said, would have stemmed from their alliance with the PBP, who fought to remove the PNC from office in the said year. The AFC asserted that the industry is being kept alive as a result of tough decisions to close estates because of inefficiencies and high production costs. To meet part of Severn's payment for sugar workers, an estimated cost of $4.24 billion will be paid to workers through the year. 50% is expected to be paid by the end of January and the balance before the end of the year. Those that are to receive Severn's pay lower than $500,000 will receive their package in full. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Due to the planned closure of the sugar estates, sugar workers and their families are already experiencing the hardship to come. However, the Regional Democratic Council of Region 6 is trying its best to support the workers' families, especially their children. Let's find out what the RDC is doing from Lashana Combs Cornelius. One major issue stemming from the laying off of sugar workers is the fact that many families do not have enough finances to allow their children to remain in school. It is in this regard that the chairman of the Regional Democratic Council of Region 6, Dennis Derub, stressed that the council will be stepping in to help out some of those families. Free transportation will be provided for children traveling from the Kanji area to New Amsterdam. The sugar workers in Kanji, Corriverton, um, I don't know how much we, we can do. I think um, we will uh, be at this RDC meeting. We will try to pass some funds to at least hire some uh, buses to transport the um, school children from the Kanji, the children from Kanji who are traveling to New Amsterdam schools. And this will be for, for the, um, the workers the, uh, yeah, who got terminated. From the estate. In addition to that, the group indicated that stakeholders have also pledged their support to facilitate counseling to those families that are in need of the service. The group explained that those laid off sugar workers and their immediate families are now questioning what their future will entail. Are we working along. Um, we are trying to arrange some counseling to some groups and um, also a little feeding program is started and they can hear but, um, we, and this is not you know from the region but we're doing it to concern stakeholders within the region reporting for mtv news update lashona gomes cornelius coming up as a farmer losing money after contractor blocks his access to his farm and cfa tcf training 53 persons to assess anti-money laundering legislations in different countries so much Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Hey girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods, as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Fridden Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 254-0334 or 254-0666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24-hour service. Telephone numbers 254-1324 or 254-1325. 
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Save big with everyday low prices at Highway 401 Furniture Store. Choose from our huge inventory of elegant home furnishing or let's build you a custom piece to suit any room in your home. Elegant dining room set to sophisticated living room designs. Accessorize your kitchen with modern pieces from our collection. Transform your bedroom with standard king size beds and mattresses, bedside sets, and vanities. Shop now. Save big at Highway 401 Furniture Store, making your home a beautiful place. Financing and layaway plans available. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. A farm and contractor, Fairfield Esequibble, is losing money as the days go by after another contractor has arbitrarily blocked his entrance into the farm. The road that is blocked is built on government reserves after permission was given. Lashonda Gomes can lead follow this report. According to a Region 2 rice farmer, Mohammed Khan, it has been over 15 years since he has been farming on the Hamburg Island without much bother from anyone. Khan explained that at that time he sought and was granted permission from the then chairman of the region, Ali Bashk, to construct a road on government reserve for him to access his farmlands. His business has now expanded as he now offers construction services and would use the road he constructed to facilitate his business. However, his business is now suffering as another contractor is claiming ownership of the government reserve. The contractor who is making that claim dragged two derelict trucks and blocked the road on Friday, January 19. As such, Khan cannot transport feed to his livestock nor fertilizer for his crops. Additionally, he has a pontoon waiting to be loaded with sand. However, he has to pay a fortune each day it is docked. I have pontoon that's loaded with sand to get to Region 1. I'm doing a project at Region 1. I take all my material from here to Region Stone, Sand, Cement. Friday, I find I come here. I see two trucks pull and block the road across. I have a pontoon out there to load. I can't load it. I have to pay the pontoon rent every day because I'm not getting to load the pantoon. I have to pay the pantoon $100,000 a day because I ain't getting to load it. The pantoon man say I have to pay me $100 a day because the pantoon is tired on the wharf since Thursday and I can't get to load the pantoon. I got a, I got a surveyor paper for this road here where they give me permission from the region to give me permission to build this road here because I take them to Hamburg and show them I'm going to open some land at Hamburg, 300 acres of land. And they give me okay to open this road here to get my access to get from the island to come across to here. Khan further explained he had reported the matter to the regional chairman and to the Guyana Lands and Survey but has since received no justice. No, no, you never show me no document. You bend some document and show the police. When the police tell him to remove the, the, the trucks, him, he said he, he get Hire authority from the assistant commission to park the truck here, and this is the new government. He have contact with Mr. Harman and everybody, and nobody can do this. Nothing. He was here and cost the full police. I was here and he cost the full police and telling him he moving no truck. I would like to see to get the road open to go and load my pantoon and get my animals feed and get my planting to come out from the island Hamburg. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Caribbean Financial Action Task Force has commenced five days of training to equip 53 participants to assess member countries' compliance with anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism regulations. Nika Jandu tells us more. An assessor's training session was opened this morning at the Pegasus Hotel for 53 participants of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, CFATEF. The training will be completed on Friday, January 26, 2018, which includes participants from Canada, Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, Belize and Guyana. 
The aim of the workshop is to equip participants with the tools and competencies needed to undertake an assessment of the technical compliance with the revised FATF recommendations. It is also aimed to review the level of effectiveness of a country's anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism regime. Attorney General Basil Williams welcomed the participants to Guyana, citing that it is a first meeting to address several aspects of the AML CFT compliance. Therefore, it is necessary for you to learn and develop the necessary techniques which are required for a sound objective and concise assessment, especially since another country's rating depends on your assessment. I therefore strongly urge you to make the most of the training seminar as you will not only be equipping yourselves to conduct mutual evaluations, but assist your respective governments prepare for their own evaluations. U.S. Ambassador to Guyana Perry Holloway said the U.S. has supported the efforts of Caribbean nations to counter money laundering and financing of terrorism. The U.S. envoy pledged that the support will continue through the Department of State. He also commended CARICOM member states for this step taken as a collective body to further enhance its efforts to combat the illegal regime. Regardless of the stage in which you find yourselves in the CFAT process, 75% of CARICOM countries have been able to exit the CFAT follow-up process, which means you must now begin the real work which is identifying, investigating, prosecuting, and convicting those who participate in money laundering and terrorism financing. While each of you receiving the training will be on the front lines in this fight against money laundering, I'm going to take a moment right now to address the issues that your countries who are CFATIC members will be facing and what they need to do. In order to ensure that financial institutions are protected, countries will need to meet the stringent fourth round now of mutual evaluations criteria, as have four of your fellow CFATF members to date, Barbados, Guatemala, Trinidad, Tobago, and Jamaica. In addition, there are other criteria outlined in the CFATF procedures. Some of these are, you need to demonstrate that you understand the vulnerabilities in your financial system and that your agencies work together domestically and internationally to ensure proper investigations and protection of financial crimes. Prosecution, not protection. Ensure that financial institutions have implemented the proper rules, regulations, and technology to prevent and detect money laundering and terrorism financing. In addition, the U.S. Envoy believes that the supervisors of financial institutions must ensure that they are in compliance with all laws and regulations. Ambassador Holloway added that countries may also face the challenge of properly implementing the laws and regulations and to constantly update same to fight against money laundering. The financial intelligence units, and we have members I'm sure from a number of financial intelligence units in this room, and other investigating units will need to be properly funded and equipped. That's for you, Minister Jordan. Properly funded and equipped. So that they are able to properly use financial intelligence and other relevant information to investigate potential money laundering, terrorism, and proliferation crimes and that this information is made available to prosecutors as appropriate. So while each of you have a lot of work ahead of you, your countries too have a lot of work, because the one thing that happens under FATF and CFATF is unfortunately the bar does continually get raised on a regular basis. And it's not what we like to do, but the, unfortunately the bad guys are, are upping their game all the time. So we are constantly having to evolve to be able to respond to what they're doing. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The first Information and Communication Technology Hub for 2018 was officially launched in Sisters Village on the East Bank of Burbese. The ICT Hub's establishment was made possible through a partnership between the Ministry of Public Telecommunication, the National Data Management Authority and the Guyana Police Force. This hub takes the total to 17 established in Region 6, with a further 18 slated to be operational by December 2018. Hubs have so far been established in Regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9 and 10. ICT hubs are being placed strategically across the country to allow persons to access the internet and government services online. 
The Ghana Teachers Union has been calling on the government to address the concerns of teachers for quite some time. In order for that to occur, the union has to present to the president their proposed multi-year agreement. However, the deadline passed a month ago and this has not been done. Sandy Ramotar tells us why. Following a meeting with the head of state last October, a decision was made by the Ghana Teachers Union to submit a proposed multi-year agreement to the president. However, this is yet to be done despite the deadline given December 20, 2017 has passed a month ago. Speaking on the delay, President of the Ghana Teachers Union, Coretta MacDonald said this has resulted from the vast amount of information which has to be placed in the proposal. Well, the amount of work that the task force had to do, not, not sure, but as soon as we completed the task that is given to us, then we'll be able to submit. The proposal is presently being compiled by a high-level task force which was set up to examine and address the outstanding concerns of teachers. The task force consists of representatives from the union, education, finance and community ministries, the public service and the presidency. However, the union is unsure of a date of submission but is hopeful the proposal can be made at the soonest. Teachers' salaries, allowances were among concerns which will be placed in a proposal seeking a resolution to the pending matters. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Still ahead, government shows no care for the lower class of ledgers agile. Stay tuned. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Make an impression with the finest towels imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various towels for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation.
your tune to news update welcome back regardless of the positive steps the government is making or is perceived to be making the opposition party is still criticizing their work it is no different now as opposition member of parliament Juan Edgel has a mouthful of adjectives to describe the government Sandy Ramatar with the details The country is in a state of crisis as a result of the government's uncertainty, coupled with their urban upper middle class elite mentality. These are the words used by opposition member of parliament, Juan Angel. We have a government that is not sure about what they're doing. Or I should put it this way, we have a government that is incapable of leading this nation. They're unwilling to accept that they don't know what to do. And even when advice is available, their class-oriented mentality and their pride disallows them from that kind of an engagement. While the race card has been speculated to be an issue, Edgel believes the real issue is based on class. He thinks there is an existing class where affiliates are bound to behave and perform in a certain manner. So it is that elite or that group that thinks that they are elite because people like me know exactly who they are. We could expose them very easily. It's just a matter of being cautious and not wanting to engage in personal flights that I would not say more about some of, that, some of those who are in that elite class structure. The executive member is also patiently awaiting the exposure of the elite class, which he says will be brought to light. He pointed to the protests against fat in education, where a majority of the picketers were from the middle class. He suspects that their voices were heard by the government due to their class. This was for the compared to protest led out by the working class of farmers, vendors, sugar workers and loggers, which apparently went unnoticed. Earlier, Agile has labeled the government as the upper middle class due to Christian pseudo-spiritual elites. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. With more competing businesses now in the Rupununi and lower exchange rates affecting the constant and steady flow of finances, the economic state of the Rupununi's financial sector is slowly declining. This is according to the chairman of the Rupununi Chamber of Commerce, Alison Kamash. The Shana Gomes Canilas followed this report. According to the chairman of the Rupununi Chamber of Commerce, Alison Kamach, the region over the last few months has not been that productive economically. She noted that the previous influx of foreigners to the region has been dwindling in 2017, right into 2018. Placing blame on what might be some of the reasons for this actuality, Kamach explained with there being a significant drop in the financial exchange rate, many businesses in the region has suffered. Kamach further explained with the Rupununi having various ethnic and cultural diversities and more businesses being erected, the competition between old and new businesses coupled with the reality of fewer customers is a recipe for slow business activities. Like all of Guyana, we suffer the same problem with businesses not so bright as it used to be or so great as it used to be. And most of our business comes from Brazil, right? We depend mostly on Brazilians to support our business um, sector here because we don't have the population for the amount you know, of businesses we have and that kind of thing. But what has been happening uh, over a period of time and more so over the holidays, the, the value, the cambio rate that they used, we used to get, it has dropped, it has fallen. And um, that would affect the amount of spending power that they have here. Because when they come here to get um, items at a reasonable price, now that the lower their, their dollar exchange is, is the more expensive our stuff would become. Nonetheless, from a regional perspective, Kamach is optimistic with the coming new months, business would improve. Well, also, the second reason being, we have more businesses now than we had in the past as well. Okay. So you'd find businesses, the, 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 the spending has been divided into more businesses. When you'd have at one time, you'd have like, let's say you had 10 businesses, and now you've got 20. Obviously, you know, 
sales would drop. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Combs, Cornelius. In an effort to attain 100% yellow fever vaccination coverage for 2018, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shandia Prasad proposed a joint effort between the government and Brazil similar to the initiative between Guyana and Suriname. According to Dr. Prasad, Guyana was able to achieve a 98% vaccination coverage for 2017. According to the Pan American Health Organization World Health Organization website, the yellow fever vaccine, once administered, is valid for life. However, these vaccines will be mandatory only for travelers moving between Guyana and neighboring Brazil and for children that are less than one year old. Guyana Stores has concluded its annual Christmas promotion on Saturday, January 20, giving away $1 million in prizes to six lucky customers. Kibini Jordan was there and filed with this report. So we're here today at the Guyana stores where they brought to a close their Christmas promotion for customers who would have supported them throughout the years and throughout 2017 during the Christmas season. Guyana Stores Limited has concluded its Christmas promotion on Saturday, January 20. Six loyal customers who have supported the company throughout the years were rewarded. Store manager Sharon Singh said close to a total of $1 million was spent in prices which included a refrigerator as the grand prize. She had this to say at the promotion draw. The way situations were in 2017, the turnout was not that great. Nevertheless, we did have quite a few coupons. Even though the customers were not present for the draw, it went on nevertheless, and Singh encouraged customers to continue shopping at Guyana stores. She further stated that, there will be a promotion for MASH 2018. We, we always do have little promotions throughout the year and we, continue, and we will continue in 2018 to do the same. Um, Christmas we cannot say as yet, but we have MASH, we have Valentine and we have Easter. I am Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for Court Round Up, the Demora Harbour Bridge schedule, as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. Is clear. Two soft text toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech. 
a guaranteed factory warranty. Here's what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Monday, January 22. A 50-year-old woman who was nabbed the last Friday with over 11 pounds of cocaine in the ceiling of her Norton Street Suzdike East Bank Demerara home was on Monday charged and sentenced to four years in jail along with a fine of $14.2 million for drug trafficking. Nikila Craig Singh appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan and admitted that on January 19, 2018, at Lot 237 Norton Street, Suzdike, East Bang de Marara, she had 5.196 kilos of cocaine in her possession for the purpose of trafficking. According to the facts presented in court by Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit Prosecutor, Konyo Sandiford, on the day in question, ranks from Kanu went to the home of Singh at Lot 237 Norton Street, Suzdike, and conducted a search. Singh who was alone disclosed to the ranks that she had drugs in her ceiling and further admitted that she received the cocaine from her brother, Junior Craig Singh. The ranks retrieved the five brick-like objects suspected to be cocaine from the ceiling. Reporting for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. <music> The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 757. Let's turn our attention to the Denmark Harbour Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Investigation into the deaths of two Pomeroon farmers takes a twist. Mother of eight disappears for the second time, leaves her husband frustrated. Feasibility study being conducted to determine how Guyana will establish its law school. And in court, a 50-year-old woman slapped with four years in jail for cocaine trafficking. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be broadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Tuesday, January 23. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.